Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This morning we want to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we want to say shalom to you wherever you are and listening to us this morning. We want to thank the Lord so much once again for the privilege and opportunity to be able to reach out unto you and to come and share the word of God with you. Shall we have a word of prayer? Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much this morning once again for your grace, for your mercy, for your loving kindness that has reached out unto us and made it possible for us to be gathered together under your feet. You've given us a promise in your word that where two or three are gathered together in your name, that dear Lord, you will be in the midst of them. So this morning, even wherever we have gathered, Lord, in our homes, possibly Heavenly Father in our cubicles at various universities, hostels, wherever it is, Lord, we want to say thank you, Jesus. And we do believe that, Lord, your promise to be with us is being fulfilled this morning. Heavenly Father, we've come before you this morning because we recognize how needy we are. And dear Lord, to continue to draw from your strength, to continue to draw from your presence, to continue to draw, God, from that fountain of living waters. I praise that this morning, Lord, may you come and bless us, that none of us will live the same as we came, but Lord, we bless even as your word comes to encourage us. We pray that the backslider will be restored, the believer will be strengthened in his faith, to keep pressing on towards the mark of that high calling. I pray that may you take total control and let all things be done to exalt, glorify, and magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is our prayer, even in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning I want us to sing a few songs and also to have a time to worship the Lord. Uh, I miss the worship services when we are gathering together. So we want to sing that song, Yesterday is gone, another day has come, do something new in my life. Wherever you are, we want to just spend this time to worship the Lord. And just let go. It doesn't matter whether you are in your home. Just sing it from the depths of your heart that God will do something new in your life. Yesterday is gone, another day has come, do something new in my life. Yesterday is gone, another day has come. Do something new in my life. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something I need something new in my life, something wonderful in my soul, something new in my life, oh Lord, yesterday. Another day has come Do something new in my life Yesterday is 
God. Another day has come. Do something new in my soul. Oh, do something new in my life.
your life something new in our life. And even as you thank the Lord, we all want to pray and remember our dear, precious Pastor Martin, the hands of the Lord. We heard in the course of the week how he lost his son, Mario. Oh, just pray that God will encourage them. God will strengthen them, even the wife and the children, that in this difficult time and moment, the grace of the Lord will be abundant in their life. We serve a living God. He does care for us. He does care for his children wherever they are. So bless the name of the Lord. And continue to thank God for these times that we are in. Just pray for other believers wherever they are. That God will continue to strengthen us. To keep pressing on towards the mark of our high calling. Even as we are scattered oh, in various places across the city. Even scattered in various places across the world. Shall we pray that the grace of God, the mighty hand of God. Will continue to be our portion. And that the hand of the Lord will uphold us and take us through these times. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to praise your name. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to exalt your name that once again your grace and mercy have reached out unto us. And that Lord, you have blessed us even to be your divine presence. I pray that may you come, Lord, and take control of the service. Heavenly Father, Lord, let all things be done, Lord, to uplift your name. And dear Lord, even as we pray and commit ourselves into your hands, we want to remember our dear, precious brother, elder, pastor, minister of your, your servant, our brother Martin, Heavenly Father and the family, the brother, oh God, and the wife, Heavenly Father, oh, our, our dear brother, departed brother, Marion's wife and children, we pray that your grace will sustain them. Heavenly Father, strengthen them in these challenging times. For we know that one of these days beyond the curtain of time, Lord, we will meet never to part no more. May you come and bless us, even as we listen to your word this morning. We thank you, even in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So God bless you wherever you are. Like I said, I really miss the praises. I really miss the songs we sing. So I wanted to sing a few praises wherever you are in your living room. We want to just sing a few praises and just worship the Lord this morning and thank Him even before we go into hearing the word. I like the old time singing, shouting. I like the old time way. I like the old time singing, shouting, praying, preaching. I like the old time way. Oh, I like the old time singing, shouting. I like the old time way. Yeah. 
worshiping the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So wherever Amen. you are, just sing and praise the Lord. Amen. This morning, uh, we want to read from two portions of the Word of God. First, from the book of Joshua, chapter 2. And we'll read from verse 9 to 11. Joshua, chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. Uh, the Bible reads, And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord had given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard, praise the Lord, for we have heard, hallelujah, how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When you came out of the land of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. And as soon as we have heard these things, praise the Lord, the children of Israel have not yet gotten to Jericho. Hallelujah. The children of Israel have not yet got into that place. But this was Rahab testifying. This was Rahab telling the two uh, spies that Joshua sent to Jericho. Praise the Lord. He was telling them that even before they got there physically. Oh, hallelujah. Look what God has done for you, the devil knows. And the devil is trembling. And Satan is trembling. But at times as believers, we don't recognize, we don't appreciate that the devil is already trembling. Even before we go on our knees to talk to the Lord in prayer. Praise the Lord. Verse 11. And as soon as we, have, we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man. Because of you, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Praise the Lord. And one verse from Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. Romans chapter 8 and verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. Praise the Lord. Shall we have a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, how sweet is your word. We pray that, Lord, may you come and take this same Lord, and, and break it to our hearts and inspire us, Lord, and encourage us to keep pressing on because you have already overcome for us. Bless these words to our heart. This is our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So the, God, the Lord bless you wherever you are once again. Uh, we are gathered here in the name of the Lord. And we reach you from the end time tabernacle in La Accra, Ghana. So wherever the saints are, we, we send you greetings from the beloved ones here. Praise the name of the Lord. And we want to use this occasion also uh, to express our condolences to uh, Pastor Martin and the family who lost uh, Pastor Marion in the U.S. Uh, in the beginning, in the course of this week. We know that our brother has just gone ahead to prepare the way for us. Remember the Bible said the dead in Christ shall arise first. And so when they arise, they will know that the resurrection morning is here with us. So our brother has only transitioned. Our prayer is that it's difficult when we lose our, we lose our loved ones. So I pray that God help Pastor Martin, God help the wife and the children, and God strengthen them in these difficult times. I want to take my text from the second scripture that we read in the book of Romans, entitled the message this morning, that we are more than conquerors. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That we are more than conquerors. We are not just conquerors, hallelujah. But the Bible says we are more than conquerors. 
Praise the name of the Lord. So I was looking through the Webster Dictionary for the meaning to conquer. What does it mean to conquer? Because as a believer, this scripture is written concerning us. Paul wrote to the people in Rome, the believers in Rome, and this scripture is also to us today. So Webster Dictionary defines a conqueror as to subdue, praise the Lord, so resistance is no longer made. Hallelujah. To subdue something until there's no more resistance. They just give up because they cannot fight back. Praise the Lord. To overcome, to vanquish. And again, he said to gain dominion or sovereignty over. So to conquer, hallelujah, is to gain dominion. To gain sovereignty over the subduing of the power of an enemy. Praise the name of the Lord. To have dominion over the power of an enemy. To have dominion, to conquer, to vanquish. Oh, hallelujah. To subdue until the enemy has no longer resistance. Because they know they have been conquered. But the scripture says, hallelujah. We are more than conquerors. Through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Not through our own strength. Not through our own ability. Not through our own wisdom. Not through what we can do ourselves. But through Christ Jesus. The Bible says we are more than conquerors. Praise the Lord. Not we will be. Hallelujah. Not we are going to be. But we are more, hallelujah, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Because Jesus conquered all. In the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, he says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and death. So Jesus conquered hell and death. Jesus conquered it all. So if he has conquered it all, hallelujah. Like we had last week, hallelujah. Going through the storm with Jesus. And at the time when the storm comes, it comes to clear the path for us. Storms don't only bring trouble, but God can send a storm to clear the path for you. And so if we are more than conquerors, it's not that we are now going to fight a battle, but Christ has already fought the battle for us. He has already cleared the enemy for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Let me not jump ahead of myself. But like David, hallelujah. Here was Goliath the enemy. And the children of Israel were all scared. They didn't know what to do. But when Goliath was defeated, hallelujah, when Goliath was killed, when Goliath was eliminated, then the children of Israel could follow up in that victory. Because the champion of the Philistines was already done away with. Amen and amen. More than conquerors. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and 15, the Bible says, As much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also, that is Christ himself, likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So Christ has already defeated Adi. Christ has already cleared the path for us. Hallelujah. Christ has already won the battle for us. And so Paul is saying that through Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. We are more than able to subdue every enemy. We are more than able to vanquish any enemy. We are more than able to have dominion over everything else. Because Christ has already conquered for us. Amen. Not that he's not going to conquer, but he has already conquered. Because that is what he said on Calvary. He said, it is finished. Not that I am not going to do it, 
Not that I am not going to fight a battle, but he said that it is finished. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. In the gospel of John chapter 16. Amen and amen. This is what Jesus said, verse 33. Oh, hallelujah. More than conquerors we are. Not we will be, but more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 33, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Hallelujah. In the world you will have tribulation. Oh, hallelujah. Like he's telling his disciples, challenges will come your way. Troubles will come your way. All kinds of things will come your way. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. But be courageous. I have overcome the world. Amen. Not I will overcome the world, but I have overcome I want you to know the tenses that the Bible is using. So that this battle that we are in, hallelujah, the victory has already been won. It's not now that we are going to fight, but the captain of the host has gone ahead before us in the battle. And the victory is already won. We're speaking on being more than conquerors this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. We are more than conquerors. And so what we need, church, is to come to that realization. What we need, church, is to have that revelation. What I need this morning is that, Lord, open my eyes. Lord, give me that revelation. Lord, cause me to come to that realization that it is a finished work. That you have already completed all things. And all you are requiring of me is just to put my footsteps in your footsteps. Because you have already gone ahead and fought the battle for us. More than conquerors. Hallelujah. So whatever the enemy is standing before you this morning. Whatever the challenge is before you this morning. I want you to tell yourself wherever you are. That I am more than a conqueror. So there's nothing that can stand before me. Because Christ has already overcome for me. Not that he's going to overcome, but he has already overcome the challenge. Whether it is sickness, whether it is trouble, whatever it is that you can imagine, he has already overcome. And that is why Paul is telling us this morning that we, are more than conquerors. Oh, that as believers, we can catch this revelation. That as believers, we can behold what he has already done for us. Look, on the cross of Calvary, he cried, it is finished. Praise the Lord. He said on the cross of Calvary, it is finished. Hallelujah. I have done, completed it. It is all done. It is all finished already. There is nothing more for you to do as a child of God but to believe what he has already done for you. To believe in what he has already accomplished for you. To believe that it is a done deal. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. The Christian life. Amen. The first scripture we read was about the children of Israel. When they left Egypt on their way to the promised land. Amen. And we know that the children of Israel, the journey of the children of Israel coming from bondage. Hallelujah. And traveling all the way to the promised land. is a type of the Christian journey. When they came out of Egypt, hallelujah, maybe the euphoria they had, the joy they had, we have left Egypt behind, we have left slavery behind, we have left bondage behind. And what joy comes to our soul the day you first give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You feel burdens have rolled away. You can't explain it, hallelujah, but there's joy unspeakable 
that the Lord brings to your soul. And Israel felt that same way because Pharaoh was left behind. Hallelujah. Because Pharaoh Egypt, the sign of slavery and bondage, was left far behind. And when Moses came, all Moses told them was that he was taking them to a land that was flowing with milk and honey. Moses, through God, told them the end of the story. He didn't tell them in between. Praise the Lord. I just love that about God. He always tells us the end so that like Christ, we can fit our eyes on the end. He's Jehovah God. He knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. He knows all that comes in between. Praise the Lord. But because he has taken care of all that comes in between, he doesn't bother telling his children about all that comes in between. He only tells us what the end game will be. Because he has already taken care of all that comes in between. So they left Egypt. They were joy. They were ecstatic. They were happy, hallelujah. But no sooner have they left, they saw the Egyptians following them. And they thought, oh, when I become a Christian, I thought that it means totally liberated. There'll be no more troubles. There'll be no more hardship. All the things have been left behind. Oh, hallelujah. The Christian journey is a battle. Hallelujah. Until the Lord comes for us into glory land, the Christian journey church, brother, sister, wherever you are hearing us, the journey is a battle. Every day is a battle, but the glorious news is this, the battle has already been won. Hallelujah. The glorious news is this, victory is already assured in this battle. Praise the Lord. Because the Lord fought on our behalf. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So look at the children of Israel. They left Egypt with joy in their heart. They left Egypt rejoicing. But no sooner we saw the Egyptians coming. And rather than keeping their focus on God, they begin to complain. They begin to remember. They begin to say all sorts against Moses, the servant of the Lord. Some of you said, is this not this what we told you from the beginning that leave us alone in Egypt? Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, never put your hand to the plow and look back because God will not be interested in you. Hallelujah. The Bible speaks about our Lord Jesus Christ that for the things that were set ahead of him, for the joy that was set before him, hallelujah, he knew he had to go through Calvary. He knew he was going to be scourged. He knew they were going to pierce his side. He knew he was going to have a crown of thorns on his head. But for the joy that was set before him, the Bible said he endured the cross. And so don't focus on the in-between. Hallelujah. But let's keep our eyes on the price. The price that God has promised us. The price that Jehovah has played in front of us. Hallelujah. So for Israel, the price was that they were going to a land flowing with milk and honey. Praise the Lord. So no matter the challenge they were facing, no matter the obstacles that was coming their way, hallelujah, that you have motivated them. That you have encouraged them. Like the Bible encourages us as believers. That the trials and the toils that we are going through now cannot be compared to the joy that will be made manifest when our Lord comes. And so no matter what you're going through, just keep your eye on the end price. Amen. More than conquerors. So in the midst of their journey from Egypt to the promised land, we know they had trials. We know they had challenges, hallelujah. And as these trials and challenges came, some of them begin to look at their own abilities. They begin to look at their own intellectuals. They begin to look at their own wisdom, how they could overcome. And they realize that, oh, we fall short. And so that is where the, uh, the memory came from. That is where the complaining came from. 
But there were some two disciples. Hallelujah. But there were some two believers. I believe they type the believer today. That no matter the challenges, no matter the obstacles, no matter the trials, no matter the tribulations that were around them, Joshua and Caleb, they only saw the end rise. A land flowing with milk and honey. Joshua and Caleb, they were not looking at their capabilities. They were not looking at their strength, but they believed what God has said. Church of the living God. That is why the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because God speaks his word. He doesn't tell us how he's going to do it. He doesn't tell us when he's going to do it. He doesn't tell us anything. All he wants from you and I is to believe that way. That when he has said anything, he will follow it through. And we know since the beginning of creation, the word of the Lord has never failed. The word of Jehovah has never failed. Hallelujah. And that is why we can believe and trust him. On every word, because he watches over his word to perform it. Blessed be his holy name. The Bible says, he said his word will never return to him void. Until it has accomplished. Hallelujah. Until it has accomplished why he spoke that word in the first place. Hallelujah. So the trials came. The troubles came. Hallelujah. And the people begin to complain. When they were near, getting near to uh, Canaan, Moses, we know, sent the 12 spies to go and spy out the land. To go and see out the land. Whether what God said is really true. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. To go and spy out the land. Whether the land is exactly like God said it to be. And remember, when God told them, he said it was a land flowing with milk and honey. God did not bother to tell them that the cities are warned because he has already taken care of it. God did not bother to tell them that the children of Anna could be there because Jehovah has already taken care of it. But he told them what the end price was. Amen. So from every tribe, we can read that in Numbers chapter 13. From every tribe, they took one person. Hallelujah. And so among these 12 was Joshua and Caleb. They went and they spied out the land. Remember, meanwhile, hallelujah, unknowing to them, the nations ahead, the enemies ahead, hallelujah, they've already begun to hear what God has done. They have heard how God plagued Egypt, hallelujah, plagues upon plagues, and how the firstborn of every creature in Egypt died. They have heard, hallelujah, how God parted the Red Sea. And how Pharaoh and his armies ran after the people of God, the children of God into the Red Sea, hallelujah, and how God swallowed them up. The nations ahead. The enemies ahead. Hallelujah. They have already heard what Jehovah was doing. And so unknown to Israel, their defenses have departed them. Their hearts have begun to fail them. Oh, hallelujah. So they went to the land from verse 25 of Numbers 13. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of Israel, the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word to them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Hallelujah. They brought the evidence of the land. That look, God is not telling us fairy tales. God is not just telling us a Nancy story. God is not just saying something that will tinkle our ears. But they brought the fruit of the land. They brought an evidence of the land to show that whatever God was saying, 
That is exactly so. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Look, there's a land beyond the river. We don't just talk about it because we are living in a day when God took our prophet beyond the curtain of time. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know, but when Brother Abraham first talked about beyond the curtain of time, in the message, the rejected king. Prior to that, he keeps talking about our hope and, 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 and the daughter that passed away, Sharon Rose, and all of it. Because he didn't know what it was like beyond the curtain of time. But God took him beyond the curtain of time to see that he would not be a spooky spirit. That is just flying around. That when he sees Brother Neville, he will not be able to shake Brother Neville's hand. He said, oh, 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 oh my. He said, wow. And to think of it. Praise the Lord. We have got the evidence of the land. Praise the Lord. I say God has brought us the evidence of the land. That he's going to prepare a place for us. That there's a real land beyond this curtain of time. Praise the Lord. So all today we may see in the U.S., maybe the mortal remains of Brother Mario. Hallelujah. But whatever plague him, whatever reason why he departed this world, it will never touch him again in that land beyond the river. Oh, what a joy that should fill the believer's heart. Amen. So they brought the fruit of the land. And they told him, Moses, verse 27, and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us. And surely, oh, hallelujah, and absolutely, the word of God is true. Hallelujah. Even what we saw is beyond what we can imagine. Could you think about it? Two people carried a bunch of grapes. Not this small one that they sell by the roadside. Hallelujah. But two people had to carry a bunch of grapes. So you could imagine how fertile the land was. And when they saw the fruit of the land, they didn't even see that kind of fruit in Egypt. They have never seen that fruit before. But now they brought the evidence of the land. And they said, surely, Absolutely. Whatever God is saying, hallelujah. It floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Praise the Lord. Remember what the Bible said? Those that have tasted of the Holy Ghost, those that have tasted of that land, if they shall turn away, hallelujah, if they shall turn their back, to renew them again is almost impossible. And yes, the people, they have been to the land. They have been witnesses of what God said will happen. They are witnesses of the word of God. They have seen the manifestation of the word that God spoke to them. When he brought them out of Egypt, that I am taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. That should have encouraged them. That no matter the trying time, that no matter the tribulation, that no matter the challenges they were going through, what God said is true. So church, just let's believe God. That should have been their message to the rest of the congregation of Israel. Forget about the testy things. Forget about all these fiery serpents here. Forget about all the troubles that we are going through. It is worth it. Because there's a land flowing with milk and honey. But after they have seen the evidence, after they have seen the fruit of the land, listen to them, nevertheless, hallelujah, they drop down from that spiritual realm into a carnal realm. Rather than keeping their eye on the promise of God and going ahead, they said, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. As if God didn't know. Hallelujah. And like I said earlier on, the in-between, God does not tell us the in-between. Because he has already taken care of it. 
So he tells us what the end game is, what the end prize is, because that is what Jehovah wants us to keep our eyes on. Oh, hallelujah. The cities are walled and very great. And above all, we saw the children of Anak there. Even the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. That is what they saw. Praise the Lord. But God already knew. Hallelujah. I say God already knew. Praise the Lord. When Jesus said, let's go across to the other side, he already knew that they were going to encounter a storm. Praise the Lord. But he was going to take them through the storms. I thank God take us through these troubles and challenges to fortify us that our faith will increase. God will not bypass the storm. Praise the Lord. When he said, let us go to the other side, he knew there was going to be a storm. He knew what the reaction of the people would be. Hallelujah. Because he's the infinite God. He's the all-knowing God. He knows the end from the very beginning. So God knew the cities were walled. God knew the cities were great. God knew everything about that land. But he only told them the land flowing with milk and honey. He did not talk about the other things to them. Praise the Lord. But why 10 of them were saying that we cannot go? God always leaves a special person for himself. Hallelujah. In the time of Elijah, he said, Lord, they have killed all the people. He said, don't worry, Elijah. They haven't killed all the people. I've got 7,000 people that have not bowed their knee to Baal. God will always leave a witness. An elected, with an elected seed for himself in every generation that he, the people are living in. So Joshua and Caleb stood up. Verse 30. And Caleb told the people. Before most, and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able. Oh, hallelujah! We are well able because we are more than conquerors. You see, they have forgotten what Jehovah told them in, in the book of uh, Exodus. Praise the name of the Lord. In Exodus chapter 23, when they came out of Egypt. When, when, when Israel, Egypt was swallowed out in the Red Sea, amen, God told them he was going to go before them. In Exodus 23, from verse 20, let's read from verse 23. For my angels shall go before thee, and bring thee into the, into the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Hallelujah. My angels shall go before thee. Verse 27. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thy enemies turn their backs to thee. When somebody turns his back to you, then he's running away. Hallelujah. In the battle you face off, but when they turn their back, that it means that they know that they are defeated. And that is why the Bible says we are more than conquerors. And Jehovah said, I will make your enemies turn their back. My fear will go before you. Praise the Lord. Verse 28, I will send hornets before thee. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It, it makes you wonder the God that we serve. He doesn't need atomic weapons. He doesn't need nuclear weapons. He doesn't need sophisticated missiles. Just imagine God sending bees. What are you going, what are you going to fight with the bees? And they are coming in their millions. They are coming in their hundreds of thousands. God said, I will send hornets. Praise the Lord. Not armies with spears. 
with arrows, with bows. No, I will send hundreds before you. Praise the Lord. So before they even got there, Jehovah has said, look, I will go before you. My fear will go before, and these enemies, they will be destroyed. So before you get there, know that God has already destroyed them. That is why Caleb could say, let us go up at once. Because we are well able. We are more than conquerors. Let's go and possess it at once. Because through Jehovah God, he has already overcome for us. But not all the children of Israel could recognize that. Not all the children of Israel, hallelujah, to come to catch that revelation that God has already conquered for them. In church of the living God, Jehovah has already conquered for us. Amen. I say Jehovah has already conquered for us. Amen. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, amen. This is what God told the children of Israel, even before they got there. Oh, blessed be his holy name. He's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 29 to 31. Then I said unto you, dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you. According to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. In other words, you are living witnesses of what God is able to do. You were all in Egypt. You saw the place. When Pharaoh said, I will never let you go. How God came down. How the place came down. And then it broke the resistance. Remember the meaning of the word conquer? He broke the resistance. Hallelujah. He said to subdue until they can no longer resist. And they just let go. So that was what God was doing before Israel. Amen. And in the wilderness where, verse 31, where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bear thee as a man doeth bear his son. And in all the way ye went until you came to this place. God said, I will go before you, Israel. So don't worry at all. Amen. And when you are going through challenging times, when you are going through troubling times, just remember this promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you until the end of the ages. Hallelujah. That is the promise of God. That is why David could say, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Oh, when God is with you, church, brother, sister, when God is with you, you are more than a conqueror. You have already overcome. And that is the revelation we want to have in our hearts. So Joshua, Caleb told the people in Joshua 14, Numbers 14, verse 6 to 9. The Bible said, and Joshua, the son of Nun and Caleb, the son of Jephna, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. Because the children of Israel, the other ten spies, brought an evil report. They saw we can't go, the cities are walled. The cities are great. Even we saw the children of Anak there. The giants, we saw people like Goliath there. And in our own eyes, we were like grasshoppers. They were thinking of their ability rather than focusing on the word of promise. Oh, hallelujah. And so when the people brought the evil report, they rent their clothes. And they speak unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, the land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God help us not to see the troubles around us. 
God help us to look beyond the trials around us. God help us to look beyond the tribulations around us and rather keep our eye on the land beyond the river. Keep our eye on the final price. Where Paul said, I have not seen. It has not entered into the years of man what he has prepared and reserved in store for his children. Praise the Lord. Brother Abraham said, sublime is not even the word. He said, it's beyond sublime. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, there is a land beyond the river. What we call the sweet forever. One of these days, hallelujah. One of these days, oh, God give us the grace. We shall walk into that land. We are tired of this world. How this old sinful world full of chaos and rottenness and filthiness and all that goes on. Lord, come take us home. Oh, hallelujah. So Joshua and Caleb, they spoke to all the company of Israel. And they said, look, it's an exceeding good land. Verse 8. If the Lord delight in us, hallelujah. I mean, why did you think God brought us out of Egypt? Why did you think God opened up the Red Sea and drowned the, the, the Israelites? Why do you think God made water to come out of the rock? Why do you think God rained manna for us when we wanted? Why do you think God gave us quails when we said we wanted meat? If God had, is not delighted in us. Hallelujah. And all of these things that Jehovah has done, Joshua and Caleb knew that it's because God delighted in his people. Hallelujah. Otherwise, why will he kill all the firstborn in Egypt? If he didn't delight in us. Will he have given us the token? The death angel could have passed and killed everybody. But because he delighted in us. Hallelujah. He provided us with a token. That when the plagues were falling, when the death angel was coming around, his children would be spared. Because he delighted in us. That is why when Pharaoh and his armies were coming, he spoke through Moses and said, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more. Because God delighted in his people. Joshua and Caleb said, If the Lord delights in us, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. He, they knew they were more than conquerors. And check, we are more than conquerors. See, hallelujah. What I want, it, I, I want to sing in my own heart, even as I preach this message, is that just be aware that the enemy knows. The enemy is already trembling. When they think of Calvary and what he did on Calvary, because he paid the ultimate price, he cried, it is finished. He cried, it is already done, it is already completed. Praise the Lord. Oh, that his children will come to that recognition. That his children will come to that realization. Hallelujah. That Papa Jehovah, the great eternal God, has already conquered for us. And therefore, we are more than conquerors. Blessed be his holy name. Amen and amen. They didn't recognize that. But Rahab knew. Praise the Lord. Jericho knew. Hallelujah. And so why Israel was saying that we cannot take it? Why you are saying, oh, this my sickness will not go away. The devil even knows that by his strife you are healed. Hallelujah. The devil knows that you are more than overcomer. The devil knows, hallelujah, that you are a victorious one. While Israel was doubting, praise the Lord, Jericho knew because they have heard. Oh, hallelujah. That is what Rahab said. In the first scripture we read, John, Joshua chapter 2, verse 9. And she said unto the men, 
I know that the Lord has given you the land. Not the Lord will give you the land. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. But Abraham said, God cannot heal you today. Because he did that 2,000 years ago. He has already healed you. All we do today is we need faith to receive what he has already done. Praise the Lord. And so Rahab said, the Lord had given. When you haven't even reached here, when you were not even born, he took the stripes on his back. Hallelujah. When you were not even born, he, his side was pierced. Hallelujah. When you were not even born, he wore the crown of thorns before you came here. Hallelujah. The Lord had given you the land. And your terror is falling upon us. Oh, hallelujah. You know what Brother Abraham said? He said the smallest believer, the smallest believer, in the time, in the place, in the way, in the circumstance, will always defeat the enemy using those sayers the Lord. Your terror. Oh, may our terror fall on the devil. May our terror fall on the enemies. May our terror fall on every challenging and trial before us. Because God is with his children. That was the confession of Rahab. Hallelujah. I said that was the confession of Rahab. But there were people in Israel that didn't even believe. That they were more than conquerors. There were people in Israel that was doubting. They were looking at the war cities. They were looking at the giant walls. They were looking at the children of Anak there. But Rahab said, the Lord had already given you the land. Your terror. Hallelujah. When we heard of what God has done, even though you have not reached yet, we felt terrorized. Praise the Lord. Because we knew about the nation of Egypt. We knew how mighty Egypt was. We knew the strength of Egypt. And if your God did that to Egypt, then what of Jericho? Hallelujah. So if he conquered death, hallelujah, the final enemy, if he conquered death, what about tuberculosis? If he conquered death, what about diabetes? If he conquered death, what about heart trouble? They are nothing. Because death, Hallelujah. Death is already conquered. Satan is already defeated. The master of all these sicknesses is already defeated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your terror is falling upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Not because of Jehovah. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. I said not because of Jehovah, but they faint because of the children of God. Because they know that God is with his children. Praise the Lord. If God will only open our eyes to see how the underworld is full of terror when you come passing by, when you go down on your knees, when you begin to cry on the name of the Lord, when you begin to recognize your position, when you begin to recognize who you are, praise the name of the Lord. You send terror through the kingdom of Satan. We are more than conquerors. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. For we have heard, hallelujah, we have heard, why have they fallen? Why, have, why, why were fear? Because they have heard of what God has done for his children. He has heard. They have heard of how God has delivered them from the hand of the Egyptians. They have heard of how God drowned Egypt in the Red Sea. They have heard how God brought water out of the rock. They have heard what God did to Sion and Og. They have heard.
have heard. And they thought these were mighty things. They thought these were mighty kingdoms that were indestructible, that nothing can happen to them. But we heard that your God, the God that you serve, the God of heaven, has made them co-cook completely. Hallelujah. We have heard. Oh, hallelujah. Look, Satan knows. Satan knows when he said it is finished. Satan knows when he said, I ask me whatever you will, and I will give it to you. Satan knows when he said, that if you have faith like a mustard seed, you will speak to that mountain and it will move. Satan knows. Satan has heard it. Hallelujah. All he does is to make you not to recognize it. But if you can recognize it, hallelujah. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When you came out of Egypt, what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, hallelujah, praise the Lord. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Oh, hallelujah. When Israel have not even read the outskirts of Jericho, praise the Lord. When Israel have not read the outskirts of the enemy, the enemy was already defeated. The enemy was already destroyed. The enemy has, uh, has already lost the battle. Praise the Lord. You know how they go to battle? First of all, there's all the psychological war. Hallelujah. There's all the psychological war that goes on. I've got big missiles. Hallelujah. And the people begin to display their missiles. So even before a shot is fired, one nation sees that, oh, no, 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 no. Look at the fighters they have got. They've got F-16s, and mine is only a helicopter. It can't, it can't, it, it's no match. They've got all these uh, gunships, military gunships, gunboats. Pray, it's a psychological war that goes on first. Praise the Lord. And the greatest battle takes place in our minds. Hallelujah. Let's fortify ourselves. Let's have the mind of Christ that the devil can have no place in our thoughts. Praise the Lord. Like Brother Timothy often say, he said, I am crazy for Christ because I have the mind of God. When you lose your mind, that is when you become crazy. So when you see a crazy person, they say, oh, he has lost his mind. Let's lose our mind for Christ and only have the mind of Christ. Praise the Lord. When we heard, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, God, give me the grace. Lord, give me the grace, hallelujah, to know what Calvary means. That the devil knows that he has already lost the battle. Praise the Lord. Because when he rose up, he said, who is the king of glory? Give up all ye gates. Give up all everlasting kingdom. Hallelujah. Who is the Lord of grace? I am the Lord of glory. The Bible says he took a hold of all things. I am he that was dead. I am he that was alive and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. He's already conquered all. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, that we might see that victory is already won. And that we are more than conquered. Rahab, hallelujah. Rahab, Jericho has already recognized they were defeated. Because God said, my fear will go ahead of you. Hallelujah. My fear will go ahead of you. My angel will go ahead of you. Hallelujah. And destroy all that is before you. Even before you get there. Doesn't the Bible say that before we even pray, our heavenly father knows our needs? Praise the Lord. But when we heard last week, God wants you to do something too. Hallelujah. 
God wants you to do something too. Let that something be your faith anchored in his word. And say, even if the storms are coming, Lord, I know you are in the boat. If the storms are coming, I will not cry out because I know the master of the ocean is with me. Praise the name of the Lord. Rahab said, hallelujah. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man. Because of you, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth. So let me tell you one thing, brother. I don't care the Jericho that is before you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't care the children of Anak that are before you. I don't care the rest that is before you. Remember, Jesus conquered it all. Jesus destroyed it all. And so Paul is saying that we are more than conquerors. Oh, that will rise up to that location and stand where he wants us to stand. Let's wake up right of Christ. Like I read in John chapter 16, verse 33, he said, this is have I spoken unto you, that ye might have peace. In the world you, have to, you, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I love the way they wrote it in the International Standard Version. It's, I have told you this, so that through me you may have peace. In the world you will have trouble. <laughs> but be courageous, I have overcome. Praise the Lord. In the way Jesus said, like, look, we will have tribulation, but be, be of good cheer. Be courageous. Hallelujah. Because he has already overcome. So when the trouble is coming, be courageous. Be of good cheer. Because Jesus has already overcome. He overcame the sicknesses. He overcame the diseases. He overcame the illnesses. He overcame your sorrow. He overcame your trial. Whatever it is, he has already overcome. He said, those things will come. But be of good cheer because he has already overcome. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. What a God that we serve. So remember before they got to Jericho, Jericho was already defeated. Hallelujah. Before they started to go around the walls of Jericho seven times, Jericho was already defeated. Praise the Lord. And just catch this revelation. That Satan is already defeated. That you are already healed. That you are already an overcomer. That God has already made a way for you. After the storms, they are only clearing the path before you. Hey, Amen. They are not coming to destroy you, but they are coming to clear the path that you can see clearly the way of the Lord before you and follow what God has for you. Last Friday, we listened to the message possessing the gate of the enemy. And let me read this quote from that message. Praise the Lord. Possessing the gate of the enemy after trial. Paragraph 109. The prophet said, watch what he did. When he was on earth, he conquered and possessed every gate the enemy had. The royal seed. He promised it by the word. He conquered it. He conquered the gate of sickness for us. That's what he came to do. He, remember, say people, he conquered the gate. You don't have to conquer it. He conquered it. That is what makes us more than conquerors. Hallelujah. So if you have a trouble today, it's not today that he's going to carry it away. Hallelujah. He already carried it when he went on Calvary. Hallelujah. He carried you near his heart. Hallelujah. He carried us all the way to Calvary. And so when he died, he crucified. When he was crucified, he was also crucifying all those challenges. And that is why he could cry out, it is finished. Hallelujah. It is finished.
praise the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You don't have to conquer it. He conquered it. The other men had to conquer their own gate. But you don't have to conquer. It's already conquered. He conquered the gates of sickness. And what did he do when he conquered the gates of sickness? Saying, whatever you ask on earth, whatever you bound on earth, he will bind in heaven. He gave the key, he gave us the keys to the gate. Paragraph 110, he conquered the gate of temptation. <laughs> Amen. By the way. And the keys was resist the enemy and he will flee from you. Whatever it is, remember you are more than a conqueror. Don't say, oh, this, this trial, I, I, I know how. You are more than an overcomer. Because the Bible is saying, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He said, little children, you have overcome. You have overcome the world. Oh, hallelujah. He conquered it all, conquered every sickness. He conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered death and hell. He conquered what the others couldn't conquer. People try to conquer all. Oh, we talk about Napoleon. We talk about Alexander the Great. We talk about all the, they, they conquer, but they couldn't conquer death. They couldn't even conquer their own self. Praise the Lord. But the God we serve, the Jehovah we serve, oh, the God of Israel, oh, the God of Elijah, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, Oh, the God of Paul, the God of Peter, the God of Columbus, hallelujah. hallelujah. The God of Arrhenius, the God of Martin Luther, the God of John Wesley, the God of William Graham. That God is still alive today. And he has conquered all for us. Amen. Hallelujah. He conquered what others couldn't conquer because they are of the natural seed. This is the spiritual seed. He conquered the gate of the grave and rose up the third day of our justification. In paragraph 112, it says, And now we are more than conquerors. We are just walk right into it as an inheritance. The victory is your inheritance. Praise the Lord. I say the victory is your inheritance. Hallelujah. What he conquered is your inheritance. Don't let the devil steal your inheritance away. Praise the Lord. More than conquerors. Now we are dealing, oh, when I listened to the message last Friday, this really rocked my heart. We are dealing with a defeated enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are dealing with a defeated enemy. Praise the Lord. Oh, I just walked around my living room as I was listening to the message. I paused the message. I said, God, hallelujah. Lord, let this enter into my soul. Lord, let it enter into my being. We are dealing with a defeated enemy. The devil is already defeated. The sickness is already defeated. The trial is already defeated. The temptation is already defeated. We are dealing with a defeated enemy. Hell is defeated. Sickness is defeated. Death is defeated. Hell is defeated. Everything is defeated. Oh, man. The prophet said, wish I was twice my size. Now maybe I will feel twice as good. We are disputing with a conquered enemy. Praise the Lord. We are disputing with a conquered enemy. Hallelujah. We are disputing with a conquered enemy. A defeated enemy. Rise up, church. Rise up, my brother. Rise up, my sister. Because you are more than a conqueror. Because the enemy is already conquered. 
Praise the Lord. All you got to do is to walk in your victory. Just walk. Remember, full steps is possession. So just walk in your victory. Just walk in, hallelujah. Possess what is your inheritance. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, blessed be his holy name. No wonder Paul could say, when they were building the block to chop off his head, he said, oh, Dev, where is your stink? Show me where you can make me squeam and scream. Grave, where is your victory? And you think you will mold me out there? I will point you to an empty tomb over there. I am in him, and he will raise me up at the last day, a defeated enemy. Praise the Lord. We are dealing with a defeated enemy. We are disputing with a conquered enemy. In the message, the God who is rich in mercy, in paragraph 25, the prophet said, You know what's beneath these hands that has been raised? There is sickness. Some of them may be uh, domestic troubles. Some of them financial troubles. Some of them are weary. Maybe some backslide, some sinner. Whatever the need is, thou art more than a match for any enemy. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Whatever the need is, thou art more than a match for any enemy. Praise the Lord. So we pray, Lord, tonight that we will recognize. That was a prophet. Say, so, Lord, we are praying that we will recognize, hallelujah, that our enemies everywhere has been defeated, even death itself, more than conquerors. Rahab was already told the people, look, Jericho is already defeated, even before you got here, because we saw what your God has done. And when he died on Calvary, it didn't happen in the closet. He died openly. Praise the Lord. And that is where he cried, it is finished. So the devil heard it. He's already defeated. He said, I was the one that was alive and died. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Let me read one more quote. From the message that she shall possess the gate of the enemy, his enemy. Preached in 1959, November 21st, paragraph 26. And we who are dead in Christ are Abraham's seed. And we are more than conquerors through him who conquered everything for us. Praise the Lord. So I am talking to those that are dead in Christ. That have been baptized, hallelujah, repented. Baptized by immersion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and baptized with the Holy Ghost and sealed into Christ. Because if you are in him and he conquered, oh, hallelujah. So when you are ministering, it just keeps coming. You know, the Bible says Levi was in the loins of Abraham. So when Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, hallelujah, Levi also paid tithes to Melchizedek. That was even in the natural. But if you were in him, and he went to Calvary, and he cried, it is finished, you were crying, it is finished with him. When he rose up, you rose up with him. When he conquered death, you conquered death with him. When he took victory, you were victorious with him. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Paragraph 29. What are you afraid about? Possess the gate. We have God's promise. We have his word. We have his Holy Spirit. The angels are encamped about. Everything is in order. 
Every wall can be taken down, took down. It's already took down. The Son of God goes before us. His banners is waving. And there's nothing can stand in the way of a saint going to meet the promise of God. Death can't stop it. The grave can't stop it. The devil can't stop it. We are more than conquerors. Sickness is conquered for you, friends. Death is conquered for you. That is the God that we serve. Oh, hallelujah. Like the song says, we've been made more than conquerors. Overcomers in this world. That is what we are. God help us, church, to recognize what he has already accomplished. That is all we are saying this morning. Recognize what he has already accomplished for you. Not, he's not going to do anything new for you, but he's already accomplished it. Recognize it. Receive it. Believe it. And let it be so in your life this morning. You are more than a conqueror. Don't think little of yourself because you are a conqueror. The enemy is already frightened about you. The enemy is already scared about you. The disease is already scared about you because you are taking your position. Take your position as a child of God and exercise your authority. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We've been made more than conquerors. Overcome us in this life. We've been made victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, as we bowed our heads. We've been made more than conquerors. Overcome us in this life. We've been made victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been made more than conquerors. Overcome us in this life. We've been made victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ. O oh, Church of the Living God. My brother, my sister, we are more than conquerors. We could have caught more people. David knew he was more than a conqueror. That is why he could look at Goliath and say, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that will come and defy the armies of the living God? Israel has forgotten they were the armies of the living God. But David recognized that he is part of the armies of the living God. He knew he was more than a conqueror. So he could tell Goliath, you come to me in the name of your gods, but I come to you in the name of God of Israel. Because he said, I will possess the gate of my enemies. Oh, hallelujah. Before Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, he knew he was more than a conqueror. He knew he, he was the lion of the tribe of Judah. There was a greater lion in him. So he said, King, I don't care what anybody will say. You can throw me in the lion's den, but I want you to know I am more than a conqueror. Oh, hallelujah. Before they threw the Hebrew boys into the fiery furnace, they knew that he was the pillar of fire. Hallelujah. They knew they were more than conquerors. So they could bluff and tell the book of Jesus and tell all the kings, King, we are not mindful of you. Don't waste your time at all to play with us. 
for we will not bow because they were more than conquerors. They knew that the enemy was already defeated. Oh, God, help each and every one of us to recognize that the enemy is already defeated. That he's already conquered for us. That victory is already ours. All we got to do is to walk into that steps and go and claim that victory. So no matter the challenge that we are facing around us today, whatever virus it is, whatever disease it is, whatever circumstance it is, the word of God says, you have overcome it. That you are more than a conqueror. Will you believe it? We've been made more than conquerors. Overcome us in this life. We've been made victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ. Just sing it for yourself. I've been made more than conqueror. Overcome in this world. I have been made victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh yes, I've been made more than conqueror, overcomer in this world. I've been made victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, you may have a need on your heart may have a need on your soul. You want to raise up your hand to the Lord and say, Lord, this is my need. You want to raise up your hand to the Lord and say, Lord, this is my request. Lord, I am believing that I am more than a conqueror. And as you raise up your hand, remember you are surrendering to the word because the word has already conquered for you. I believe that we are more than conquerors. Whatever Jericho is before you, remember Rahab in the camp of the enemy was already confessing that when we heard what God has done, our strength was departed. I want you to know this day that the life in that sickness is already departed because we are calling on the name of the Lord. Whatever your desires, you are more than the conqueror in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your word. Our dear Heavenly Father, I want to praise your holy name. Heavenly Father, thank you for this timely Lord exhortation that we are more than conquerors because Christ conquered all for us. Heavenly Father, that we are more than conquerors because our Lord Christ it is finished on the cross of Calvary. And that there's nothing for anything more for us to do. So Heavenly Father, wherever your children are, Lord, they've raised up their hands to you because there's a need behind that hand. And your prophet has said that whatever the need is, your prophet said whatever the need is, we should know that Jesus has conquered it all. Lord, we are claiming. Lord, we are taking our position. Lord, we are possessing our inheritance. Because, Lord, you have already conquered all. You've already defeated all. Let the prophet pray, oh God, help us to recognize, help us to come to that realization. The Heavenly Father, we are more than conquerors and overcomers in this world. Oh, let this word anchor in our soul. Lord, give us revelation of your word to know where we are, to know where we are standing. That Lord, we are already overcome us. We have already overcome every, every challenge, even those that are yet to come. Lord, we have already overcome them. Because Lord, you did overcome all for us. Oh, we thank you this day for your word. 
bless these words to our hearts. Lord, let us be encouraged by your word. And Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, in the midst of all the challenges that we are facing, in the midst of all the troublous times that we are encountering, Lord, may we confess when we wake up in the morning. May we confess when an obstacle comes before us. May we confess when trials come before us. May we confess believing that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who conquered it for us. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. Water this seed in our hearts and let it bring forth after its kind in our lives. We bless your name and we thank you. Even in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The blood of Jesus Christ will be made more than conquerors, overcome us in this life. We'll be made victorious through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen and praise the Lord. So God bless you, saints, wherever you are. We thank the Lord once again for this opportunity to share the follow, to have fellowship with you. Keep believing, keep trusting God. And don't forget, keep praying for Pastor Martin and the family that God will strengthen them and God will encourage them even as he has called his son home. It's a challenging time, but we know that God will take them through it all. And God will also take you through it all. Remember, you are more than the conqueror. God bless you, church, and shalom to your soul.